So let's let's go even further uh, and talk about what happened with the Kapoor thing and Pai George thing. And in the 1975 convention in Patiala, you wrote basically, you know, Sadar Kapoor Singh, who is, I don't know, our, in the last century, one of the biggest brains in, <laughs> in Sikhi we had. Um, he even was clear. But then he and by George Singh, who worked, um, you know, actively for the Khalsa, I guess, or for the sitcom, uh, I guess he went to the empire. So talk about that. Why? I mean, they were both smart. Uh, how come Kapoor Singh knew what to do and by George Singh uh, fell astray? Well, you know, so that's something which I think uh, individuals have to make their own decisions on. Let me actually present. They both were actually bureaucrats. So we must understand this is why this is a good case study. They both worked for the British. They were both very well educated. They were very active politically. They were administrators. They were bureaucrats. But there is a difference, right? And the difference is, in fact, Pai Jodh Singh is given the title Pai in the community. They even worked on a project together, you know, that UNESCO publication, which was done in 1969 at the 500th anniversary of uh, Guru Nanak Sahib Sanitary. Uh, that five, six who worked on the translations collectively, Pai Jodh Singh is part of it, Sardar Kapoor Singh is also part of that. So these are very well uh, respected individuals of the time. They understand the politics of the time. They understand Sikhi. But here comes a differentiation uh, that Pai Jodh Singh, as a vice chancellor, starts to essentially interpret at the time on how to commemorate Guru Tegh Bahadur Padshah. And there's a meeting held for that. And he starts to say that Sikhi is not political. Sikhi is only spiritual. Now, this is very interesting. And in that context, Kapoor Singh, Sardar Kapoor Singh, I must say, uh, says of Pai Jodh Singh that he critiques him heavily. In fact, not only does he critique him, he says, I, I would say you can read his words because these, I think they are critiques of ours, if you ask me, because we are like this. But his essential point is, you can talk about whether we are ready for it or not, but you cannot say that this is not a historical fact, and you cannot say that this is not Sikhi. Now, very important, I, the line which he wrote, which I think is most applicable to us as well right now is, he says the validity can be judged, however unpalatable or prima face impractical it might otherwise appear in the case of present day Sikh people politically subjugated, culturally submerged, intellectually confused and barren, morally decayed, economically deprived, and plundered through the partition of India and religiously profaned. Think about this for a second. What he's saying is he's talking about us, you and me, and all of us who are going through these kind of things, that what is this, that when there is a confusion when we religiously don't understand ourselves, politically don't understand it, we have gone through a serious uh, partition moment and then truncation of Punjab in the Punjabi Suba moment. All he's saying is, look, you cannot say this did not happen like this. You cannot rewrite the history and you cannot redefine Sikhi, even if we are not capable of understanding it fully at this moment in time. That's the point which I want to highlight more. Well, let's come to some uh, current events then. Um, and you know what? Let me ask you a question because I was talking to one of my uncles. He called me the other day uh, because he knows I was doing this. And let's talk about kind of uh, what Sadar Kapoor Singh was saying this too. Because he was like, oh, Khalsa? I mean, we're not even, we can't agree on anything now. There's no unity. What Raj are we going to do? How are we going to come together? We fight on every little thing. You know, and I was like, yeah, okay. I mean, you got a point. You got a point. You fight on every little thing. But it doesn't mean that, like Kapoor Singh was saying, doesn't mean that we don't need it or we don't want yeah. it still. Uh, I think, so what do you say to that? Not, I think that's a very real fight. question. I'm saying that this is a very real question. And I understand that question. And I also get it many a time. I think we need to understand where it's coming from. There are a couple of myths about this idea of we don't have unity. Because what does unity mean? I think we have this word very confused with the word uniformity. Uniformity means everyone has to agree to it. Unity means people who believe in that aspiration are united to get it done. They have clarity and they have they figure out the resources to get things done. So let's bring it, let's start with Dasme Pasha for a second. 
you know, there is a battle of Pangani. You think every Sikh agreed with it? In fact, most Sikhs left it. There was a Halwai who fought on his behalf. His mama fought with him. Few Sikhs fought with him uh, when he's fighting his first battle, Battle of Pangani. And Pir Buddhu Shah came and won. One Mahant stayed back and fought with him. So who unifies? Unity is always about people who believe in the idea. And when they unify, things get done. Uh, so let's apply it contemporarily. This is not about, uh, firstly, if you want to unify, you must have an idea clear. What is the vision of Raj in 2020? You know, people who have the vision in the 80s, they fought and they died and they were tortured as well. You can agree or disagree, just like during Bhagavad Singh Bahadur people, they still agree or dis people still debate him. But people who, you, who believed in the idea of Banda Singh Bahadur and the Panjipyaras who were with him, they united, you know, uh, and they fought. So unity is not that everyone who self-identifies as a Sikh must agree with the idea. That's not what unity is. They never did. Not everyone even joined the Khalsa rank and everyone who was a Khalsa did not even work for the Khalsa Raj. So let's be very, very clear about this. Now, in addition to this, what we need to also understand is that Raj is not our end goal. Remember, Raj is governance as well as rule. Governance is the minimum we are looking for. But if the governance cannot be established properly, then we must establish the rule as well. And this is cyclical in Sikhi. During Guru period, we see the preparations for it and the city states being started. After that, sometimes we ruled, sometimes we didn't. Sometimes we worked with the state, sometimes we did not work with the state. But the idea that we must be prepared and remain sovereign, this is very, very clear in Sikhi. So in last 200 years, this is one of the reasons we are discussing this, since 1849 and primarily since 1947, we continue to work with unjust states. We have had unjust states, you know, whether it were the Mughals or the Hill Rajas, after that, and it's not about Hindu or Muslim here. Let's get that very, very clear because uh, they both, it's the ruling class essentially. Sometimes they came in the form of Lakhpat Rai or Jaswat Rai, and other times they came in the forms of Mir Mannus. Sometimes they came as Mughal emperors. Other times they came, came as the Hill Rajas. Sometimes they came under the British Empire, and sometimes they're coming under an Indian Empire. I call it empire, but you can call it Indian state. The issue six have had, and they must, we must continue to have that in the name of the Guru is we fight for the oppressed. We fight for Halimi Raj. Six were the ones in 1970s who says, let's make India the federal structure. And when they did that, they were called separatists. You know what? All leading political thinkers of India today say that was the right vision. Six were just 50 years ahead. That's what that means. And we need to be ahead. If you are going to be the pioneers and trendsetters, you will be killed. That's what it means. This is what we did. You know, we were the ones who were fighting with Ahmad Shah Abdali, or actually Durrani, but more popularly known as Abdali, when he kept attacking and take, to, was taking Hindu women from India as slaves. We fought with them. He could not cross the Punjab, the area where six ruled. Even when the rule was not very unified, even when it was in a missile structure or a confederacy structure of, a, of the time in the missile period. But the point is that Raj is something we must be capable of. We must be able to fight for. It is not an end goal, but it is a goal we will work towards if the state is unjust, if the policies are unjust.